And yes, absolutely, SK is correct. Uh, these conclusions or, or uh, what, what I'm about to present is uh, my own work in consultation with the Miami Herald. And um, I am very grateful to two of my collaborators, so who are both mentioned on this first slide. Sarah Blasky is the lead investigative journalist with the Miami Herald. And um, Nikki Lewis, who is a PhD candidate, helped with the modeling. She's an incredibly bright woman who has a great future in front of her. And I'm um, in debt to both of these uh, professionals for what they added to this work. So I'm, I apologize. I just got to figure out exactly how to, oh, there we go, forward each of these slides. Okay. A little bit of history on how I actually got involved uh, doing this work. And um, I, so for those of you who know me, you know that most of my research has been in seismic design and evaluation, but actually seismic design and evaluation really set me up well to do this forensic investigation with the Herald. So initially I was interviewed by a number of different news organizations, um, including the New York Times. And I contacted the Herald actually based on something that they had presented, which I thought was incorrect. And when I started this work, I thought it was very important that we all give um, the investigative team patience, you know, give them time to really study this collapse sequence. And um, I had told the Herald that I thought what they presented was erroneous and actually Rather than saying to me, well, I don't think you know what you're talking about, they actually kept interviewing me, kept coming back to me, and eventually hired me to conduct this forensic analysis with their team. So this isn't something that I did in isolation. I worked very much with their team. And actually, because I was working with their team, I ended up getting access to photographs, permits, et cetera, that I wouldn't have been able to access without them. Sarah Blasky is, was the lead um, journalist on this, and she really, I think, just did a fantastic job and um, really listened to me, which I thought was very helpful um, because, you know, we fed off of each other and also respected each other's expertise, and that was really helpful. You will note that the information that I provided to you is different than the information that I'm about to present because some of the photographs are owned by the Miami Herald, and so um, they are not to be distributed. The approach that I use was an approach that I've used when I've actually done forensic evaluation of buildings that have been damaged in earthquakes. So um, what I started out with, which I think is pretty logical, is a review of the photographs and as well as videos of the damage. And we probably looked at those over three months. I've said to others when I present this that my children always came down and said to me, Mom, are you looking at that building again? You know, and so... The first thing really I think we all do when we do forensic evaluations is to evaluate the photographs. We, of course, reviewed permits. Um, there were over 50 permits uh, starting in 1980, and this building was built in 1980. So there's a lot of work that's been done on this building. We did our best to study the drawings. I provided a set of drawings that were actually provided by the city of Surfside, so I did not put those drawings together. So there's a reduced set of structural drawings. You'll see there are drawings that are repeated, and we'll talk a little bit about that. There are reports that have been available. I'm sure you've seen this in the news. Um, there was a whole site that the city of Surfside set up, um, but also the lawyers that were working with the Miami Herald ended up getting a lot of information that was not publicly available. So we use that as well. Using all of that and interviews that the Miami Herald conducted with survivors of the collapse, we established a timeline, and I will talk about that timeline. And then what you know we did on the engineering side, as well as looking at all of this, is to conduct some nonlinear analyses. And these nonlinear analyses were quite sophisticated. We're using a program called LS Dyna, and um, this approach that I'm using is something that I've published, so it's a peer-reviewed modeling approach, and um, really we tried to look at different scenarios, and the second half of the talk is going to focus on that modeling. The first half of the talk is going to focus on the timeline and the drawings as well as the photographs. So one of the things that I have learned about 
nonlinear analysis is that you can pretty much get this nonlinear analysis to show whatever you want it to show by fooling around with the modeling. And that is not what we wanted to do. We wanted to use, as um, Dr. Ghosh just said, we wanted to use the timeline and the observations and the photographs to validate the model. So if we had a model that didn't match what we saw in terms of the damage, then we considered that model not to be valid or that scenario not to be valid. And again, I'll talk about that in the second half of the talk. So some from an initial interviews that, that um, were conducted um, for me, people kept asking me, well, what do you think is the reason that the building failed?